I guess take a look at uh, lesson three for the first part of it, which is beyond CPCDC. Okay, so if you're looking at what you are trying to prove in this particular proof, I want to end up with segment with ray RU bisecting angle SRT. Okay, so how do you know that an angle is bisected? Maybe let's start there. How do we know that an angle is bisected? If it has two congruent angles. Everybody agree with that? Okay, so my CPCTC step is going to be those congruent angles. So I'm going to have to get the triangles congruent first. Hopefully the angles that I want to be congruent are part of those two triangles. And then I can state that that particular angle was bisected. Okay, so that's my step beyond. Okay, so let's start off with proving them congruent. So let's start off with our first part of the given. So we're going to state segment SU is congruent to segment TU. Given information, and that is actually marked in the picture. I forgot to take it off. And that's a pair of sides, so if it helps you, we can keep track in the margin. That's an S for a pair of sides. We also know that angle RUS is congruent to angle RUT. Also, given information, RUS and RUT are located there and there in the picture. So it's a pair of angles and from the triangle, so I can put an A in the margin there. Okay, we should be getting better at these parts. Uh, these two triangles butt up against each other. So my next step would be segment RU is congruent to RU by the reflexive property. So again, that's another pair of sides. Okay, so is that enough to prove the two triangles congruent? Okay, Owen, give me a congruent statement then. So we can say, like, triangle, wait, we're trying to, trying to say RU bisects that, but we could say triangle SRU is congruent to triangle TRU. Okay. So triangle SRU is congruent to triangle TRU. And what's my method? Go ahead, Owen. I think I was thinking like CPCTC for some reason. Okay. So just be careful with your steps. As we keep progressing more, don't get them flip-flopped. Okay, anytime you have triangles congruent, it's got to be one of the three, SSS, SAS, or ASA. Okay, now, for our CPCTC step, looking at the picture, we want to prove that angle SRT was bisected by RU, right here in pink. So what angles would I want to be congruent? Okay, so, hold on a second. So, S, R, U, because I want them at R, right? I want these two angles up here congruent. So I'm going to say angle S, R, U is congruent to angle T, R, U by C, P, C, T, C. Because, again, C, P, C, T, C stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Since my triangles are congruent and the step above it, the rest of the parts are congruent as well. Okay, so if I know then in my picture that these two angles, SRU and TRU, up here are congruent, we can then state that that angle was bisected. So I can state then what I'm trying to prove, that ray RU bisects angle SRT. Okay. Anybody got the way I'm going to word this? It's based on the definition of a bis angle bisector, but it's in the opposite direction. So the def normally we would say if a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. But I want to go the other direction. Okay, so let me help you out. So if I would say if a ray divides an angle... If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it bisects the angle. 
It's hard to read another. there. I apologize. So if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it bisects the angle. It's the converse of what we normally use. Because normally, the given would tell us that the angle was bisected, and we would make this conclusion. Today, we're going the other direction with it. If we know that two congruent angles were formed, then we can say that angle was bisected. So again, this is my additional step. Last week, we stopped with triangles congruent. The past two days, we stopped with CPCTC. Today, we are going to stop a step beyond that. Now, you can probably figure out why I wanted to check where we're at with triangles before we get too far along here. Okay. So, let's take a look at the second one then. Okay, so this one... We are given that we have angle YWX congruent angle ZWX, that segment XW is perpendicular to segment YZ, and that X is the midpoint of segment YZ. Okay, so the first thing we would start with, let's look backwards a minute. So if I want to prove in this problem that X is the midpoint of YZ. Okay, so let's start with our given here. So my first step is going to be, let's try that again. Angle YWX is congruent to angle ZWX. And that is given information. I'm going to put an angle in the margin because that's a pair of angles that we know are congruent. Okay. Now, what do you want to do second? You want to put the together given? Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So let me write that down first. That's given. Okay, so which where are my right angles then at? Aiden? Okay, so angle YXW. I'm gonna put it at the same step. And that's an and sign there. And ZXW are right angles. And my reason for that would be uh, if two segments are perpendicular, then they form right angles. So again, if two segments are perpendicular, then they form right angles. Okay, so in my picture, I've got these two right angles. And then, go, Aiden, what do we know about right angles then? Congruent. They're congruent. So my fourth step would be then that these two angles are congruent. So angle, bless you, so angle ZXW would be congruent to angle YXW, and my reason, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay, so that's a pair of angles there. Uh, so then you said XW is congruent to XW, and that is the reflexive property. And that's a pair of sides. Okay, so that should be enough to prove your two triangles congruent. Okay, so Aiden, you're on a roll here. So what's one triangle going to be? Okay, so triangle ZX. Oops, I put ZXY, my bad. So triangle ZXW is congruent to angle, or triangle... Okay, what's my method going to be? Mm -hmm. ASA. ASA. Okay, so my triangles are congruent. So therefore, any of the rest of the parts that I haven't already stated are now congruent. So Michael, what did we say we wanted? Um, to get y, X, Z, X, Z. Okay, so YX is going to be congruent to XZ by CPCTC. And again, if those segments are congruent, we can then state what we're trying to prove, that X is the midpoint of YZ. 
Okay, so the next question is, how do I word that? Since we had an issue, I think, with wording the angle bisector one. Anybody got a good guess or got a feeling? A, a mm-hmm. Okay, good. If a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is the midpoint of the segment. So it's based on definition of a midpoint, but just going in the opposite <coughs> direction. Okay. So again, hopefully at this point you're seeing how we go, what, why it's a step further, why it's beyond CPCTC. Okay, the last proof actually is not, uh, but we got to talk about what an auxiliary line is. Anybody have an idea of what an auxiliary line is? You ever heard that before? Like you talk about auxiliary with other things, like in relation to your TV, right? You ever heard of that? Like auxiliary, if you'd like go the input through it. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so how do you think it would relate to a picture? A geometry or a drawing? It have a or... Okay, so it's kind of like your other concept. It's something, something else you can add to the picture that's not already there. So an auxiliary line is an additional line that's added to the diagram. Maybe it's not drawn there for you already. It's something you need to add. So something extra to add to your picture. Like maybe you don't even have triangles in your picture and maybe I need to have them to help me. So I'm gonna draw on a segment to make a triangle. So that would be an auxiliary line. Okay, now our postulate says, uh, anytime I have two points in the picture, I could draw a line, I could draw a segment, I can add what I need to. So the postulate says two points determine a line or array or a segment depending on what I'm wanting in the problem. So again, anytime I have two points in my situation, two points in my picture, I can draw a line if need be, or a segment, or a ray. It just depends on what's beneficial to me. There are many proofs where you need lines, rays, segments that do not appear in the original figure. You know, like I was saying before, we don't prove in class every theorem that we cover. You know, we could, but we don't take the time to prove every one of them. Uh, there are some theorems that if it talks, you guys know much about an isosceles triangle? No? Okay, so if I have an isosceles triangle, did you guys know that for one it has two sides that are congruent, right? Did you know that the angles across from those sides are also congruent? That's something we're going to talk about later this semester. Um, but if I were to actually prove that, I would need to get two triangles to appear in the picture. So I have to add something else. Okay. So if I look at this last proof, we have spent so much time proving triangles congruent. This one doesn't even have two triangles in the picture. Okay. So if we look at our picture a little bit here, it says we are given that we have circle C and that segment AD is congruent to segment AB. Okay, so if we do circle C, that's given. And we have segment AD congruent to segment AB. Given information. I want to prove that angle B is congruent to angle D. Now, the reason I made that comment is because that kind of is involved in our picture. But we haven't actually proven that yet. Okay, so can you picture, if I had two triangles in this picture, if I could prove them congruent, don't you, can't you picture that B and D would be congruent? So what do I need to draw in? Okay, so we're going to draw, and we're actually going to write it as draw in, let's call it segment AC. You could put line if you want. And the reason, two points determine a segment. If you said you wanted to draw on the line, you would say two points determine the line. So I've got two triangles now in the picture. I've got triangle ADC and triangle ABC. 
So right now we have a one pair of congruent parts, specifically a pair of congruent sides. Uh, I need two more things. So what else can help me in this one? Okay, uh, Owen, go ahead. Can we assume that AC is perpendicular to DD or not? Uh, we can't assume that, no. Okay. There's a theorem later that we'll talk about, but uh, we haven't proven that yet. Okay, Aiden? Um, AC is congruent to AC. Okay, AC is congruent to AC. That's our reflexive property. Let's pair sides. Okay, so now we got two things. Okay, DC is congruent to BC. Okay, why? Yeah, the first part of the given said we had a circle. So remember, all radii of a circle are congruent. Radii of a circle are congruent. Okay, so that should be enough to prove the two triangles congruent. So we can state triangle, uh, let's do ADC is congruent to triangle ABC by side, side, sides. And again, if my triangles are congruent, the rest of the parts are congruent. So I can finish with angle B congruent to angle D by CPCTC. So this was one of them that was not beyond CPCTC, but you had to use the concept of being able to draw an auxiliary line in to your picture to help you. So you have a worksheet today. Some of them are beyond CPCTC. There is uh, one of them, I want to say, that is just a CPCPC step, but you have to draw something extra into your picture. Okay, does anybody have any questions?